You brought in two uh, veteran guys in Fort and Brown. How have they kind of assimilated themselves? They've done a nice job. Uh, you know, LJ was with us from the get-go. I mean, in the off-season program, Zach's kind of a late addition, so he's trying to play catch up a little bit. But you can tell with him out on the field. You know, he's played a lot of football and he's played a lot of good football. So he's a veteran that gets it. He just needs to get a little bit more time, I think, in our scheme, and he'll be a good contributor for us. Did they come to you and say, hey, we have a chance to pick up Zach Brown here? What do you think? Or did you tell them, uh, hey, I think we would like to have that? <laughs> well, one thing, I don't tell them anything, yeah. OK? But uh, uh, no, uh, Howie, Howie yeah. came to me and, and mentioned that there was a chance that, you know, that we may end up picking him up. And just we try to do some research on them, find out what kind of player they are and how they are away from the building to see if they'd be a good fit for us. So well, you've yeah. seen him play a whole lot, though, right? Well, I don't watch Washington's yeah. defense. That's I mean, I, the offense yeah. could probably tell you a little bit more about what kind of yeah. guy he has. But uh, when I went back and watched him, you know, he does a nice job. He's obviously he's a very talented young man, and, and uh, uh, he's played a lot of, had a lot of competitive snaps in the NFL. So I think he gets it. Now he's just got to find out, you know, he's got to get a little bit more experience in our scheme. But uh, there's some similarities, I think, that he can draw on from his uh, experience at both Washington and, and at Buffalo, and, and he'll, be, he'll help us. Are you still trying to figure out what uh, spot he's best fit for? I'm trying to figure out what spot a lot of guys are best fit for. I mean, we've got a lot of moving pieces right now, uh, and it's going to be fluid all the way through training camp. We're going to play guys at a lot of different positions. But as we've probably had this conversation before, I think in the NFL when you only carry six on a 53-man roster or if you carry seven, guys have to be able to be multiple in what they play. So that's going to be an experiment as we continue to go through, finish up these OTAs this week and then go into training camp and try to find out where guys are best suited and, and really who's the best mix for us as we get out on the There's field. There's always change in the NFL as far as personnel, losing a guy like Jordan, and the fact that he could be a three down linebacker when he was healthy. Is that something, what all that change is about, the versatility, trying to figure out who can fill that slot? I think so. Uh, you know, you're trying to find out who can be your base linebacker and who can, who can slide right into being a three down guy that you don't have to take him off the field. And, and you know, the other thing is, too, is we, we know what Nigel Bradham brings to our to our organization you know he's been a very productive guy he's filled in for Jordan when Jordan was hurt in the previous two years so um, we know Nigel can slip in there I don't know if that's his most natural position but uh, it may be the best thing for our football team we'll just have to see really a lot of it depends on how the other guys assimilate into that position the other positions on the field. What did you see from uh, Paul Warlow coming back from the knee injury and I know he practiced the first week but hasn't since then. But... Well Paul's I, I, number one I don't think anybody's worked any harder to come off that knee injury than Paul Warlow I mean he's he's been a stallion that way. Uh, but he's missed a lot of time here recently. Uh, he's had some issues with his knee and, and uh, things flared up on him a little bit. Nothing that I think is an alarming thing. I think it's all part of getting that thing healthy again. Um, but they've had to let it rest. And so he's missed a lot of time. You know, it's going to be important for him to be able to come back into training camp healthy so he can compete. Okay, so you don't expect him this week then? Or? Uh, I, I hope we're going to get him, but if the trainers say we're going to let that thing rest another week, I wouldn't be shocked. So uh, I know he's, <laughs> he hates to be down. I mean, he'll, he'll push it if, if they'll let him, um, but I just don't know yet. I haven't talked to the trainers if they're going to be uh, cautious about that right with, now for with him. With a guy like uh, TJ Edwards, what can you learn about a, a rookie in, the, in these uh, spring sessions? Uh, that the learning curve is very deep sometimes and uh, both this is uh, with him and Joey Alfieri you know they're two of the better undrafted free agents that I think that we've had since I've been here now that whether that equates to them making our football team is really going to be up to them but um, the learning curve is is high for those guys and as you guys know when you get the veterans in here they don't get all the reps that they probably need or want so how fast they can um, grasp what you're doing with limited or very limited reps is really going to be uh, decide how far they can go with us. How much growth has Camus shown in year two of being on the first team? Uh, he's shown a lot of, uh, a lot of good growth. Uh, he's made incremental progress, I think, every year that we've had him here. Uh, I think I fully expect him to be able to take the next step. And, uh, 
and be more than just a special teams guy and a spot player on defense. I'd like to think that he could be a real uh, factor for us. I mean, he runs great. He's a great space player. Um, so the way that we're getting offenses nowadays where everybody spreads you out and forces you to defend all the field, this really plays to his, his game. He's done a nice job as far as trying to get his body weight up and his strength up. So um, he's not a safety playing linebacker anymore. He's actually getting fitting into a linebacker body. So that's good to see. Which seems to mean a lot to him. Uh, you know, some guys, they have a role and they're kind of like, okay, this is my role. I'm a special teams guy. But he's really, it seems to mean a lot to him to get a bigger role on defense. It seems very important to him. I think it is. I think he's always felt like he wanted to be out there more, that he deserved more to play. Now, again, we only, some of the um, defensive personnel groups we've got, we've only got so many linebackers yeah. and there's only so many snaps in a ball game. So um, they have to pick and choose. But I think he's he's gotten to the point. And again, part of it is his gaining our trust in him and and Jim, and gaining trust with Jim Schwartz you know and I think he's done that and uh, you know now he's not a finished product yet and none of our guys are but they'll if he continues to work he's got a chance I think to have a nice year for us would you say Alex, the same about Nate Gary that uh, the style of NFL play these days suits his skill set well I think so I think everybody's spreading you out and I think we we, uh, when we went through our off-season program and looked at all the tape, I think we were probably in our nickel package about 70% of the time. You know, nobody gets in two backs anymore and pounds the ball on you like they used to. Uh, they'll do it in short yardage and goal line situations, but that's kind of their pick and choose of when they're going to do it. We're seeing so much uh, three wides, and uh, we're in our nickel package so often that, again, I think it, all the guys that run well and move well in space, I think it fits their game. You when mentioned you some of the undrafted guys before. Alex Singleton comes in from the CFL, had a ton of success up there. Right. How much of a difference does that make for a guy like that to have that experience? Well, I know he knows one thing. The, the motion guys aren't moving towards the line <laughs> yeah. of scrimmage yeah. at the snap. Alex has really done a nice job. I think the thing I'm anxious to see Alex is, is when we put the pads on because I got a sense that he's a real tough nut and that he'll flourish when the physical part of the game comes into play and that'll come in when we put the pads on uh, you know in in training camp and I'm anxious to see that he's a bright guy he understands football now again you know what we do and what the CFL teams that he was on do are a little bit different you know we don't have to defend 12 but I think he's I think he'll flash for us and I think he's really going to flash I think when we put the pads on as a, def as a defensive coach what's it like in Carson Wentz locked up well, it's good. Uh, Carson, can you score about 35 a game? And, and uh, no, but it's great. And, I, you know, I applaud the organization and Howie for getting that done. I think if you know what you've got ahead of you and you've got your quarterback locked up, I think then it just helps you right now be able to fill out your roster and know where your, where your resources are, you know, to, do, to extend other people other than Carson. So uh, I think it's a good thing for us. And, and uh, and I think Carson coming back after the second year after his ACL, I think he's going to be a much better player. That's just my experience has always been the second year after an ACL injury is really your best year. I, I think a year ago we had Joe Walker. You know, Joe was coming off of an ACL the first year. And, you know, you looked at him and said, mm, Joe didn't run like he used to run. And then all of a sudden the second year he was kind of back to being more of himself in terms of movement. I just think that's part of the medical history when you do those things. So uh, I'm, I'm – a big Carson Wentz fan. Mm -hmm. when, you, uh, when you say that Edwards and Alfieri are two of the better undrafted guys that you've had in here, what are some of the positive things that stands out about each of those guys? Well, they both uh, have played a lot of football in college. They were both uh, good football players. I know TJ was a very productive player at Wisconsin. Um, and I just think, you know, if you're trying to upgrade uh, the depth that you're at your position and trying to create competition, I just think they're two of the better guys that we've brought in the in the four years that I'm I've been here. I just think of all the undrafted free agents that we've got, the college undrafted free agents, and I just think they're two of the better ones. They get it. They've played a lot of football, and uh, and uh, I think they help us. You talk about you've, you've been Nate Straits, sorry, uh, Nate Straits, and uh, obviously his development from being a safety at Nebraska to a linebacker at this level. You've seen the entire thing. How far has he come just physically, changing and morphing? I think he's done a nice job. Now, Nate's never going to be a 250-pound guy. Um, but Nate, 
without a doubt is is probably the he's the bright he's br smarter than I am in the meeting room. I mean he gets it. Um, I think he's got when you've got a back end perspective, uh, particularly when it comes to the coverage part of it. I think it gives you a unique perspective because all of a sudden I think he's the one guy that understands how everything fits together with the back end because a lot of the times, you know, when in college he was a safety and, and he understood what the back end did. I just think it gives him a unique perspective. And I think he's grown in it. I have, I have a lot of trust in him. Uh, I think I could put him at any position. And, and again, I'm not saying that we're, we're bringing in uh, Dick Butkus or anything, but he knows what every position on our, on, at the linebackers, that, what they do, all the pressures, all the zone coverages. And for that reason alone, I think he becomes a very valuable guy to you because right, right now you, nobody can predict who gets hurt in a ball game. All of a sudden a guy goes down, and if you want somebody to go in and fill in and, and finish a game for you that hasn't practiced at that position during the week, I would trust him. I can also ask about another guy you kind of threw in there last year at safety for a game, and, and Rasul. Um, is there any potential in him at safety, or are you guys working hey, there? I mean, we still cross train him, yeah, yeah. just so he knows it. So if we get in those situations, it's not like just brand new. And we did it last year a little bit, just on scout team or whatever, just so we would see it from a different perspective. But Rasul's a corner, and that's what he is. It, it's not a, just because we cross train guys doesn't mean hey. He's uh, we're going to make that switch. He, he is a corner, and uh, I think if he ever had to play safety, he would he would do a nice job there. But that's not really his role on this team. Tim, you spent over ten years in the league. What does it mean to have the quarterback signed for the long term? Uh, I think it's really important, and for the locker room, for one, um, just to know that 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 position secured, and the quarterback is such a big part of this game. And then the progression and never not having to worry about it and everything else. Everything's just more settled. Everybody's relaxed. I, I, I think it's all positive for everybody. He understands whatever role he's in, whether he's starting or he's not. And he has zero selfishness about him. Um, he gets it. And uh, we'll see how it keeps going here. Obviously, he's just like everybody else. We're all fighting, and then we'll see how it goes down. But very impressed with him. He's still trying to lose a little weight to get quicker. Yeah, I mean he's up. He's he's got to fight that. I mean he's unlike other corners in this league. He's a big, tall. He's thick. That's just, just the way his body is. Um, but I would say I've never had a question about his weight. Um, he's doing a good job, and um, I look forward to watching him here the rest of the spring what'd and you, training camp. What'd you learn about him or see from him after that Cowboys game? The way uh, that ended, and then kind of the way he bounced back and played down the stretch. Yeah, it doesn't that didn't shock me one bit. Yeah, I mean, that could have been obviously an interception right there, and then maybe we win the game, or it didn't end up that way. So I think that he's learned in our room that it doesn't matter what the outcome is, whether it was the other way. I mean, you close the door on that, and you move on to the next one, and zero, zero implications for him after that. I mean, it was like it never happened, which if you play that position, that's what you, that's what you signed up for. So he was fine. You yeah. guys at practice have a lot of fun. They have a lot of energy. Yep. Um, is it like that everywhere? I mean, they just seem to kind of set the tone in practice every day. <clears throat> a lot of talking, a lot of jumping around. Yeah, I, w I would say that's probably due just to the general makeup of the room. They're all great kids. They all love being here. They all love coming into the building every, every day and, and working. Um, I can't say that that's what it's like everywhere. Um, I'm just I'm blessed that I'm part of this one. So it's been a, it's it's obviously fun to be around those guys. Are they the same way in meetings and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we've talked about this before. I mean, we 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 have a lot of fun in there. I mean, you have to. I mean, and there's a balance as well. I mean, you can we can sit there and somebody says something, then we laugh for a couple seconds, and then you got to be able to snap out of it and then get right back. And that goes on a lot in the room. Um, at the end of the day, we're 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 here. It's our job. Um, but you have to have, I think you have to have that balance. If you don't, then it's hard you know, for those guys. They're here a lot of time, I mean, a long time, not so much in the offseason. But when you get the season, that's a long, long grind. So um, I pride myself on being able to do that in the meeting room and at the same time being able to get our work done. So, um, yeah, it's a good group. You've been around. Sidney Jones, um, if you take away the physical part, is, mm -hmm. is, is he the same guy you scouted back at, at, at Washington? At, at no, I think he's grown up a lot since then. Yeah. I mean the, the, is the play, confidence still there. Or yeah, I think the confidence is is what it is, and 
like I said earlier, the biggest, the best thing for him is that he's out there right now, and um, no setbacks as of yet. Um, and that, I'll, I mean, the way this game's played, even in the spring, I mean, it's going. You know, so um, the fact that he's out there and he hasn't missed a snap is, I think, for me and for him, is the best part about it. Um, and then obviously, if you're out there, the more reps you get, it just helps you going forward. So. Uh, I like where he's at. You've been around, obviously, Jim Schwartz for a, a while now. Yep. What's his greatest strength as a defensive coordinator? Um, well, I think he's got a lot. Yeah. Um, I think the best thing is, is he's got a he's got a great grip on the players from all three levels of the defense: the front, the back end, the linebackers, and he knows what at this point all being together, him with the players, he knows what the players do best, and I think he does a great job of putting the players in the best position for them to go out to play, barring, forget about who we're playing. Yeah. Um, that obviously has something to do with it when we get into the season. Um, but I think Jim never steps, uh, I would say, out of his lane, meaning that trying to do too much for them. He gets it. The players know what to expect from him. Um, we know what, we, what to expect from Jim, and I think he does a great job of that. Corey, yeah. more what's, it mean, what's it mean to have Carson Wentz signed for the long term? No, I mean, anytime I think there's some stability on your team, especially at that position, it means a lot to everybody. So it's a plus. As a defensive backs coach, what mm -hmm. makes Carson special? What would make him so tough to, to game plan against? Well, I mean, obviously, he can make all the throws. He's mobile. Um, he's, just, he's smart. I mean, I'm not coaching the guy, but obviously, yeah. I get to know him. And I, mean, I think if you went down the checklist of things that you want in your quarterback, he checks all the boxes. For the first time in the past few years, you don't really have that one obvious guy especially for punt returns. So, so who are the top candidates right now? Top candidates. Uh, we got a bunch of guys working back there for punt return. Obviously, Deshaun Jackson would fit into that question somewhere. Um, we've talked a lot about that, kind of what his role might be. I would say it this way. Um, I'm sure he'll have a role, mm -hmm. exactly what that is. I don't know that anyone knows that totally yet. Um, as we get into the season, start playing games and find out you know, how much he's playing on offense, how much he's got left in the tank. Um, all those sorts of things will help us kind of determine what he'll do for us. Um, and then behind him, you got a bunch of guys. Um, obviously, Boston Scott's been doing a bunch of that stuff in this preseason here uh, or off season. Um, he's been doing a good job. I would say he also still has a long ways to go and a lot to prove. Um, but uh, he would be an option. We got some young players. Tompkins has done a little bit of it in the past. He's obviously got a lot of speed. Um, so we're excited to see what he does. Pomfrey is coming back in there. Um, excited to see what he does. I'm trying to think, I'm missing somebody. Uh, lost some time. Oh, Mark and Michelle. Mm -hmm. He's done a bunch of really good things throughout this offseason. Um, Flash, not necessarily as a punt returner, um, but enough to make me say, hey, he might be an interesting candidate back there. So there's a handful of guys. You had Corey back there last year. Uh, he's he's obviously injured right now, but. He was kind of inconsistent, especially returning punts. Is that? Yeah, I would say, I mean, we had him back there because we knew he was a player we could depend on and trust. And he was more of an emergency option okay. for us. Darren went down, yeah. and then he ended up stepping in. We knew he'd catch the ball um, and get positive yards and a good runner. I don't know that he's the same dynamic yeah. in tight quarters, uh, start, stop, make, you miss. That's not necessarily his game. but. Um, some guys can be productive back there, even if they don't have all that stuff. And he had a good return for us against Tampa Bay. Yeah. There was a penalty on yeah. it. He got called back a little bit. But um, so he is an option like that. I would say maybe more of like an emergency <laughs> role right there. And okay, then who would be your guys at kick return? Go ahead. Who would be your guys at kick returner then? Uh, kick returner, you're looking at kind of the same group. Um, you're, you're looking at really the same group. Obviously, Deshaun would come out of that yeah. equation there. Um, and then. You know, you'd like that guy to have a little bit more size unless he's super dynamic or really fast. Um, so then you're looking at Pumphrey, how much of that is his role? Maybe not quite as much. Um, but other than that, the same group. Miles did it a little bit at Penn State. Would yeah, you know so I would say for me, um, he's an intriguing candidate back there. We'll see kind of what his role is. But yeah, I'm on the same page yeah. with you. I like the looks of that. <laughs> when, uh, when you say that Boston Scott has a lot to prove, what does he have to prove? Well, number one, he's got to be able to catch the ball back there in games, and we can't find that out until we play games. Um, so that would be the first thing. And then 
you're looking for a guy who can make some guys miss out there in games, and we can't figure that out until we play the games. And I'm not trying to. No, of course. But right now you can't see that stuff. Right. You can't tackle. You can't take guys to the ground. So I would say ultimately there's just a lot that you can't see right now. You can see the guy catch the ball in air. You can see him catch it in, without shoulder pads on. Um, but all those other things we got to find out when we're playing the real game. Would you say that, that special teams coordinators are the one group of people who want more preseason games? <laughs> no, I would not say that. <laughs> not for one second. <laughs> I'm not even getting into that whole conversation, but definitely we don't need more. There's, okay. a, there's always turnover in coverage players every year. You lost some good ones, LaRory and DJ, but LJ Ford, Andrew Sandeo, are those some of the guys you're yeah, I would say those two guys are on the list of guys who are going to come in here and probably are going to end up having a big role for us. Um, as you guys well know, every year the roster changes over so much on the back end. I mean, the whole roster changes over so much anyway. And then on the back end of it, in our world, the guys who are really playing a lot of plays for us, it, it changes a bunch. Um, so we got a lot to figure out. It's, this is a difficult time of year because really, a lot of things have to sort out on the depth chart offensively and defensively. And I'm sure those guys stand in here and say, well, we don't really have a depth chart yet and all that. And I hear the same thing in our meetings. So it's like, well, until you have yours, I really can't have mine. So, <laughs> so right now it's like you're just kind of preparing for a lot of possibilities. What if this happened and who would end up being the wing on punt? And so, OK, we need to get a handful of guys ready, not just the two best guys, but a handful of guys ready to play that spot. What if the long snapper goes down? Who are our options there? Let's get a few guys ready and target a couple guys. And do we feel good that at least one of these guys is going to make the roster? We do. All right, so at least we'll have an option there, right, in that situation. So I would say right now a lot of what you're doing is like contingency planning and trying to get guys to play a bunch of different spots so that you do have options in case all of a sudden going into week three, Somebody gets hurt, this guy's got can no longer play that spot, so we gotta move this guy from that spot to that spot. He's at least done it before. Now he might not have done it recently, but at least he's done it before and he's been in that situation. So I'd say that's a lot of kind of what we do right now. Is there a juggling feel for Parky at the end of that Chicago game and did you feel kinda of compelled to maybe reach out to him and go up? Uh you know what, actually I, I did actually end up seeing him underneath the stadium after the game. I feel terrible for him. I mean, he's a great kid, a great player. He had a, I mean, he did great for us, obviously. We all know that. Um, I think the world of him, um, you know, obviously, I'm hoping he'll bounce, bounce back. I know he will. Uh, I believe in the guy. Um, he just needs another new opportunity. I think a fresh start for him is probably a good thing. But yeah, I think the world of Cody, I think he's a great player. I think he'll end up coming back. Obviously, he ran into the injury with us. If that didn't happen, he'd still be here, probably. How do you how do you juggle the punt return situation with a guy like Deshaun, who's so valuable on offense? I mean, everything's kind of dictated by situations. What he did, you know, whether he ran a long route the play before, or that kind of thing. Yeah, I would say. I mean, you kind of answered it. There's a lot of variables in a guy like that. Number one is how many plays is he playing? How old is he? How many plays can he handle? Can he handle more workload? Can he not? Does he want to do it? Does he not want to do it? I mean, all those things factor into it. If he doesn't want to do it, then he's probably not going to be very good anyway. Uh, so all that stuff, what did he do on the last play? What's the situation in the game? Are we up by a lot where it's not worth the risk of getting you know, an injury or something like that and a play like that? Is the head coach on board with playing him as the owner and the general manager, are they all on the same right. page? Um, I would say, I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of variables. In Does he want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he definitely wants to have some kind of a role in it. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely excited about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always had a great relationship with him. He's done a great job for us. Um, my first year here was his last, right. um, and he was great that year. He was really our primary guy. He was playing a huge offensive role. We probably had him doing too much, um, to be honest with you. So we need to figure a way to balance all that out um, with all the parties involved. Um, but no, I'm definitely encouraged that he'll have some type of role. Safe to assume he would just be used in sort of like high leverage situations. I would think it would be more of probably what you're classifying as a high leverage 
situation. <laughs> like, you know, games on the line, yeah. you know, more of those yeah. things. Obviously not a huge lead. Let's see what he can sure. do back there. <laughs> right. Although I'd like that. Miracle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the right. You you brought up uh, the turnaround with two guys that are returning. I know Matt Collins is injured, but Sheldon Gibson and Matt Collins, what do they do well on special teams? Which one? Both of uh, them? Both of them, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, Mac actually, Mac, Mac did a nice job. He's been off the field, obviously, for a while for us. But when he came in here, he was young. He was still learning and growing. But his first year, he played a bunch for us and contributed positively. And I would say for all those types of guys, really the most improvement starts to come year two, year three. And he kind of missed out on that. So definitely excited to see where he can go from there. Um, Shelton for us last year played played a big role for us and did a great job. I mean, he was a gunner for us on the outside, and he definitely affected the punt game. Um, and most of that's because his speed. He didn't make a ton of tackles, but he was down there in the guy's face or forcing a fair catch or kind of forcing the ball to bubble or to go somewhere it didn't want to go, and somebody else would clean it up and make a play. So both those guys have done a good job for us. Both those guys got a lot to prove right now probably both offensively and on special teams. What does, hey, mean, having, year, what does it mean having stability with Rick and Jake and Cam? Yeah, right. uh, these guys asked that. Um, yeah, that's obviously huge for us. Those guys, having all three of those guys work together, and they all really play a large part in each other's success. Um, so having them all together, still working together, is really helpful, I think, for all these guys. How good was Cam's? How good was Cam's season? A lot, of, you know, sort of yeah, a record take season, but I mean, I would say this: Cam did a lot of really good things, and I would also say that there's a lot of things that he's still got to work on. Uh, he knows that. I know he knows he can be a better player. Um, he's got his hands full, repeating the year he had last year, just doing the same things. Um, but he also has a lot of room for improvement. We're excited about him. The one thing I know is he's always worked really hard, um, which gives him a chance. Last year at this time, there was a lot of uncertainty with the change in the kickoff rules, and I think all of your peers were kind of feeling it out. How yeah. much more comfortable are you? This I would say at the end of the year, now going into this season, a whole lot more comfortable. Um, I would say that there was a lot going on, not only in the beginning of last year, but up until really the later part of it. And I think towards the end, everybody started to get a little bit better feel for how to play the play out on both sides of it. Um, so I feel a lot better going into this year. I'm glad that they didn't make a bunch of new changes. Um, although I would also say that I'm glad the changes they made had a bunch of positive results in terms of player safety and all that, which I've always said I'm all behind. Did the rules change what you look for in a kickoff return or, or anything else? I don't know that it totally changed. Uh, what you're looking for in a kickoff returner, mm -hmm. it did change a lot of the, like, the blocking stuff and okay. you know like a little bit of the scheme stuff because of who can block, who can be in a double team, who can't be. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say so much as a returner. Okay.